don't bother with Delta One Suites. Yes, that's a bold statement. Allow me to explain myself. Delta launched their new Suites product back in October 2017, a US rival to Qatar's newly introduced Q Suite, which we all know and love. Delta flies this suite on their new A330 Neos, A350s and select retrofitted 767s. On the surface, it looks like a stellar product. In fact, even aviation golden boy Sam Chewy called it the best US airline. So why am I throwing it shade? To find out, we'll head to New York's JFK airport. Where we're gonna be trying out Delta's Suites. Well, it is with a little twist. First thing that I've noticed is that you get a special access on their Sky Priority channel. Now, however, there already appears to be a bit of a queue. Maybe I should check in on one of the kiosks here and get my boarding pass. I think that's a good idea. Unfortunately, this means getting straight back in the queue. One eternity later. Right, so all through TSA, apparently the trays that they use going through the security scanners are antibacterial. Bullshit. We're now going to be going over to the Delta Sky Club Lounge, which basically is their business lounge. Although today, apparently, I'm flying first, but it's not. It's American first. In the US, they call their business class, often they call it first class. Now there's something you need to know about Delta lounges in the US and it's a bit of a unique situation for me today. Usually speaking, if you're flying domestically in the US, flying business or first, you don't get lounge access. You can get lounge access if you've got like an Amex Platinum card or certain other diners club. However, if you're flying transcontinental, you do get given lounge access, which is what we have today. This is also used for their more international destinations as well, the Sky Club Lounge. Let's see what they offer. Well, of course, I've uh, had a little look around. Coffee? I haven't got like a muffin kind of thing. But I have to say, to be fair, compared to a lot of other lounges around the world at the minute, it's actually, actually fair play. They've got like an entire buffet counter of self-serve food. Um, they've got a bar set up, although you can't, they can't serve any alcohol apparently due to state law until 10 a.m. Boring! Pretty happy. Anyway, let's just go and head over to the gate now. After a short wait and many triple medallion upgrade requests later, we were ready to get on board. We're flying the freshly retrofitted 767-400 today over to Los Angeles. A, B, C, Walking into this brand new cabin is pretty impressive. Seats are staggered in a one-to-one -one config and everything feels fresh and new. It seems hard to believe this is an over 20 year old plane. And no, this isn't a homage to Air France's La Première. I appear to have selected the only crew rest seat, complete with musty curtains and perhaps the sketchiest interior finishing since PIA's executive economy. With that, a detailed docu-series was run on how meticulous Delta cleaned their planes. Oh boy, how wrong this turned out to be. As we pushed back, I spent a good few minutes failing at the three-point seatbelt. Yeah, that's just me being an idiot. The captain informed us that today's flight would be just shy of six hours over to California. Right guys, it is welcome on board today's flight. Of course, I have this awesome Delta One suite to experience. Well. I call it the suite, but it's not quite the suite. They cut short of calling it a suite because it doesn't include the door, but it's in essence exactly the same as what you would get on the A330 Neo. So one of my first impressions, the hard product itself, I'm really quite impressed with. It's very fresh. It's a little bit tight getting it in and out, but the actual suite itself does feel quite private, even without having the doors on there. They've actually staggered the seating quite well. So when I look to my left, I can't even see the person next to me. So that is quite nice. It's not hugely high, but it's still enough. However, this is where the issue lies, the soft product. I've just had drink service come round and I say drink service, there was some alcohol offered, there was a couple of cans of beer and some wine. That's great, you say, perfect. I'm actually a bit tired, I've had a, a busy week last week, I was drinking quite a bit when I was away, so I thought, you know what, I'd actually like a soft drink. Can I have a Diet Coke? No. What do, what do you mean? 
no, 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 we don't, we don't serve that. Delta's policy, they don't serve soft drinks. Okay, so what's the logic there? The other thing I've been quite shocked over, especially of the fact that they've clearly sponsored a post by Sam Chewy recently. Delta Airlines. Where they go on about how everything is cleaned to perfection. There's all these different checks that they do to make sure everything's clean, perfect for COVID. Okay, that's great. And I appreciate that. But when I got on board, I noticed that, yes, okay, parts of the seat were clean. I opened the tray table and it's filthy. You can obviously clean it. But to go to the extent to say you've got this like eight, nine point check where you're making sure that every part that is contacted by passengers is cleaned and it isn't. So you say, big deal, a messy tray table. Well, no, it demonstrates more than that, unfortunately. If a tray table is missed, what also wasn't cleaned, it might not obviously be apparent. The high touch areas of the IFE or even the entire seat. The issue is the deal that Delta makes out of this being clean. This flight had just been on the Brazil route, the current Covid capital of the world. And in terms of what's offered for food, that's also the issue. Now bear in mind this is a near $700 one-way ticket. This is the food provided for a six-hour flight on the flagship transcontinental route. It's a sorry state. I get that something like this would be provided on a two to three hour flight, but a flight in similar length to a transatlantic crossing Offering a packet of chips and dip, this isn't safety, this is cost cutting through and through. When you consider that the likes of JetBlue are flying this exact route at a cheaper price and offer a three course meal, champagne and snack selection, it really puts this into perspective. Enough of my unfortunate but warranted criticism, let's check out the loo and try out the bed. All Delta One suites transform into a fully lay flat bed. And what's more, thankfully, this Transcon flight has Delta's comfy West End bedding. It goes without saying there's no turndown service, so I did my best. Getting into the bed is quite hilarious to watch. I'm certainly not very elegant. I settled in for a quick nap as it had been a super early start leaving Manhattan. It really seemed like no time at all before the FAs announced we were shortly making a final approach. I set the bed back up, cleared away my rubbish and restowed my bag. Next, the confusing task of the three-point seatbelt. I honestly will never get the hang of these. And with that, LA came into view. All right guys, so welcome to Los Angeles uh, after that pretty, uh, I guess it's quite a long flight. It's like a five and a half hour flight. Overall then, a real mixed bag. There's clearly a lot of teething issues with Delta's heavily adapted soft product. But considering US aviation is currently at 90% of what it was pre-COVID, I think it's time for them to can the thinly veiled cost-cutting excuses and emulate what American, Alaska or JetBlue have successfully rolled out. I hope you found this real life review useful rather than the usual showboating from Sam Chewy. I've made my view quite clear on where I stand with this lad. He needs to be clearer of the relationship he has with the airlines, less fake, own the fact he's more of an advertorial. Anyway, that's my two cents. Let me know what you think down below. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you all again next week.